now that we have uh, some tools available to us, we've got our rotational equivalent of Optimus Prime, Sam, Bumblebee, etc. cetera. Uh, we can take a look at how to use them specifically with a problem like this one, okay? So when the gear rotates 20 revolutions, it achieves an angular velocity of such and such starting from rest. Determine its constant angular acceleration and the time required. Okay, so let's decode this. Figure out what is it looking for, okay? Constant acceleration, okay. That's very useful because that tells us right away that what we're looking for is a value for alpha. And alpha is constant, so that means Sam, Optimus, Prime, Bumblebee are all available to us, so that's good. Okay, let's decode another part here. Rotates 20 revolutions, okay? What is that the linear analog of? Is it like a speed? Is it like a acceleration? Is it like a distance? And if you're thinking distance, then you're thinking correctly, okay? That's a displacement, that's a displacement. So that is our delta, oops, that's the wrong thing. That's our delta theta right there. That's what that is, okay? And then finally, our last bit of information in here is um, it achieves an angular velocity like this, okay? So that's a velocity term. It just tells us straight up what that is. Uh, but what we need to know is that that is our omega final, okay? So omega final is 30 like that. What's a main initial? All right. I'm going to presume you figured that out because you guys are good at reading. Okay. It says it starts from rest. So we've got this. Okay. So if this were a linear problem, we've got an initial speed, a final speed, um, a distance, and we're looking for acceleration. Okay. So there's no time here. All right. So since there's no time, that means that Sam's not a good option. And it means Optimus Prime is not a good option. That leaves us with Bumblebee. Okay. So let's write down our rot rotational equivalent for Bumblebee here. Omega final squared. So omega initial squared plus two alpha delta theta. Okay, and we have all those numbers, right? We got the initial, the fifth final, we got the delta, and we're good to go. Okay, so let's pull off a little bit of algebra here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of chunk through it pretty quickly here. Uh, so my alpha, I'm gonna have omega final squared minus omega initial squared. All right, divided by two delta theta, just like that. Now all I gotta do is put my number in. However, with displacement, I got to be careful. All of these equations we've talked about and all these rotational equivalents we've talked about deal with radians, okay? So it's kind of like we've got a units situation because the distance it tells us is 20 revolutions. So our delta theta value is 20, but it's 20 revolutions. Now, each revolution is 2 pi. Okay, so I, if I do a little conversion here, I've got 20 revolutions. Okay, and I'm going to go 2 pi radians per revolution. So my revolutions are going to cancel out, and my delta theta simply becomes 40 pi, like that. Now, once I've got my 40 pi, then I can put my number in, okay? So let me, i got to scoot a little bit around here. Come over here. Uh, so... For alpha, then we've got omega final squared, which was 30 squared minus 0 squared over 2 times 40 pi.
And I'll just let you calculate the number on that one because my phone is ringing. <laughs>